remind yourself that you're right here, right now. That's what mindfulness is for, to remind you. They say that mindfulness is, is a refuge, it's a protection, because it helps you remember the good lessons you've learned from the past. And one of the things you remember, it's good for you to get in the mind in the present moment, to be alert to the present moment, and then to recognize whatever is going to come up that's going to pull you away. So we're not just here in the present moment, we're also here mindfully. Because we know there are good things to do in the present moment. We give the mind a good place to settle down, we can give it a way to breathe that feels good. These things are good not only because they're good in the present moment, but because they're good into the future as well. They train you in good habits. You could say, well, if I just want the mind to rest, all I have to do is sleep. Well, the mind rests when you sleep, but it doesn't develop good qualities at the same time. But if you rest by being alert, mindful, and ardent in what you're doing right now, then the mind gains strength right now, and it also develops good habits. Otherwise, it just wanders around, squanders its energies on useless thinking. You want to develop the ability to think the thoughts you want to think and not the ones you don't want to think. In order to give some examples, you notice that the mind has slipped off. The first step is just to bring it right back. And if the mind is having trouble staying with the breath, you can change the way you breathe, make it deeper, heavier, whatever is necessary. But if you find that that distracting thought keeps pulling you back, pulling you back, that's when you have to look at its drawbacks. That's the second approach. Ask yourself, if I thought this for 24 hours, what would it accomplish? Usually it's not much aside from just getting the mind all riled up and making it more and more inclined to do unskillful things. So when you see the drawbacks of that kind of thinking, then you can drop it. But sometimes the mind still goes back, in which case you just say, okay, that can be there, but I'm not going to focus on it. It's like you're in this corner of the room and people are talking in the other corner of the room. You don't have to listen into what they're saying. You can focus on the work at hand. And they can talk as much as they like, that's their business. And after a while, the difference here, of course, is that your thoughts are fed by your paying attention to them. And if you're not going to pay them any attention, after a while they begin to drift away. Another technique is to notice that when you think a thought, there's going to be a pattern of tension going through the body someplace. This is why mental labor is so tiring. I had a friend who was a monk in Thailand. He liked to work on construction projects. And he'd see me working on translating, and he says, how can you say you're tired after translating? You just sit there and you just scratch, 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 scratch with your pen. But then one day he tried translating some of a John Lee's Dharma into his dialect. And he said, he said his head got all itchy after just one page. So yeah, there's patterns of tension going through the head, going through different parts of the body when you're thinking. And so if you notice that, you can just relax those patterns of tension, and the thought won't have a place to stay. If it still keeps coming back, that's when you grit your teeth, press the tongue against the roof of your mouth, and tell yourself, I'm not going to think that thought, and then just repeat a meditation word really fast, like machine gun fire. Don't give any openings for that thought to come through. And then after a while you find that it's gone away. So these are five ways you can deal with distracting thoughts as they come up. And the Buddha said, when you master these techniques, then you master the, the ways of the mind. In other words, when you th want to think about something, you'll think about it. When you don't want to think about it, the mind will rest. That's when you're in charge of your thoughts, otherwise your thoughts are in charge of you. And that's not right. After all, they should be your tools, you don't want to be their tool. So remember, you can gain control over the mind. And there's a sense of well-being that comes when you've got that control in hand.